tonight, guys, we all get six pulled. <laughs> and my mic was muted for that. Perfect. Show's going great. <laughs> Everything that could have possibly gone wrong in the last 10 minutes went wrong twice. Uh, but we powered up. through it because that's what we do. Welcome everybody to episode 26 of Esports Canada TV. What I hope is not our last of all the <laughs> errors and mistakes that we just did. Uh, but I'm your host at Quinn of the Net. Welcome to a very special episode because of a lot of things, which I'll get to in a bit. But first, I want to welcome my two lovely co-hosts, my best friends in the world, Yay. at ESC Joey and at ESC Songers. Gentlemen, how are you doing this evening? That's so nice, John. So nice. I'm well, thanks. I'm so good. I've been watching hot stuff all day. I'm so excited. Shh, we're not going to get to that till after. I'm just saying. Can you see the, Sorry, the matrix of hot words there in the <laughs> overlay? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Guys, we have two guests tonight. Uh, we're going to get to the first one here shortly, but uh, right after the break, we're going to have Kevin Katu Albert from Clarity Gaming, a uh, caster that you all know and love. He'll be joining us uh, about halfway through the episode to talk to us about a whole slew of things. But first, our guest, uh, a returning guest, one of only, I think, three returning guests that we've ever had on the show. A special mm -hmm. privilege. If you can, if you can, Jonathan uh, Knight. I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> William LeFrancois from Lanny ETS. William, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, and you guys? Could be better with all of the problems I just ran into, but um, this is the first time, if anyone notices, uh, the background behind me is different for this episode because mm -hmm. I get to uh, host the show from home now. Yay! Which I was not able to do before. I used to have to stay at work for four additional hours and then do the show from there and then walk home at around 11 o'clock at night. Uh, but I fought my ISP and they gave me fiber optic high speed internet service in my very own home. Yes. And now I can host the show um, from here with my cat and lovely girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so I got that going for me. But William, oh, yeah. welcome back to the show. Of course, Nick, Frank, and I, and a about a thousand other gamers were all at LAN ETS, uh, not the weekend that just passed, but the weekend before that, and we had a blast, and I'm guessing that you uh, felt the same way? Yeah, we had a blast too, and I'm happy to learn that everyone had a blast just like us, and uh, yeah, it was an epic weekend, over yeah. 1,000 gamers. The, the official numbers are 1,094 gamers. Whoa. So it's wow, pretty wow. amazing. Our goal was, was over 1,000, so we it's did done. It. <laughs> <laughs> Broke it. Well it, done. Was, it was weird. When I, when I first got there, it was just like a sea of computers, and the, the whole building was just like a labyrinth of land. Like, no matter where you went in the building, you just found more and more computers. Like, I thought the first level was it, and then I found there was a second level, and then in the second level, there was a whole, like, rear part where there was yep. even more people, and then there was a whole amphitheater. It was just like... Is everyone in Montreal here right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, amazing. we used all the, the space available. So, yeah, lots of computer, lots of cable. Over, I think, 12 kilometers of cable this year. So. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's, it's a lot of cable to test. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, I, I actually ran into an issue. Uh, one of the volunteers asked me for help because one of the computers was... Uh, not set up with the internet, so he had to go get cables, and he came back with this massive, like, coil of cable. He's like, I think it's long enough. And then we could, the computers yes. weren't far, but it was this massive cable, and uh, yeah, you and know, had some, to climb in on there. Sometimes you... Oh, no. like, like, okay, 100 feet, it's okay, let's use yeah. it. <laughs> Better more than less. Yeah. yeah. So, William, um, did everything kind of go hunky-dory? Did everything perform smoothly? Obviously, you guys had a plan leading up to this massive event. Um, once it became, you know, doors open and everyone started filing in, was there anything glaring mistakes that you thought, we could have done this, we could have done that? Well, it's just like every year, we had little problems, but, you know, it's always the same thing. It's all in the shadow, so <laughs> sometimes you don't know there's a problem. 
us we know we're all running everywhere but people they don't they don't know anything about the problem uh, this year it was a good event maybe some uh, network problem on friday night but we solved them so i mean it was the biggest problem of the weekend and of course like on friday and on a uh, sunday the the league of legion finals the riot right. game server crash so and I know we all had to, to anything, so. we all had to take off there Sunday around five. I know my flight was around eight, and you guys hit the road. Um, Frank, one of the other casters, had to get back. Uh, how did the League of Legends finals turn out? Did you guys get them all completed? Well, it was done. They made a deal to do one extra match, and uh, like our meta gaming uh, team, they won the first game. So they said, uh, "Okay, if we won, if we win the second game." We got the first place, and uh, if the opponent uh, gets the victory, it will be a tie. So, oh, okay. it was a tie. They split the pot and the prizes. So, that's the way it went. So. Very, very no yeah, problem. We found a way to finish the finals. Yeah, I think you guys did a really good job of managing. Like, if there were issues, because, uh, like you said, there was a point where there was a bunch of dancing going on, little competitions and these giveaways. And nobody really knew that there was anything going on, but you guys were frantically like uh, fixing up, let's say the 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 lol thing going down. So you guys did a wonderful job there. Just yeah. uh, just how much do you think you guys actually gave away in prizes? Because I know like the the StarCraft two winner got one thousand six hundred dollars, and like even the second place in Dota got five hundred dollars. And plus, you guys had just so many things that you were just giving away products. Yeah. How much do you think? Uh, in money, it was close to eighteen thousand dollar in uh, material prizes over uh, over twenty thousand. Wow! Wow! <laughs> so we had we had some amazing pri uh, material prizes like the video cards, yeah, yeah. five hundred dollars each. Uh, the computer, yeah, the last prize, one point seven k. Aces Ooh, Rock machine they gave away. I was super yeah. jealous of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a Republic of Gaming machine. So yeah, every every year we try to have the best prizes for the attendees, and this oh, year yeah. it was no different. We had bigger prizes for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you guys gave away some sweet stuff, and I think yeah. I saw people were breaking their keyboards to win new ones and stuff. So you guys, you guys did it big. That was really impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had great event. Uh, like a positive, so that's all what matters. If people have fun, well, we reach our goal. That's it. I'm gonna take one question from uh, the chat quick. From Hydralis? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was about to ask that very question. Uh, if it's go the ahead. Big, biggest event in term, uh, can we expand? Uh, <laughs> that's the hard question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, did you guys reach max capacity? Maybe expand the event we will need to discuss about that with the school it's always the same thing every year we're trying to discuss <laughs> to have seats there's a lot of security concern you have to respect some uh, criteria so mm -hmm. we will see with the university our goal is to bring them as a gamer as possible to have fun but you know there's four walls so <laughs> we need to respect their li yeah. limit um, I have a question. How much notoriety, like how much um, uh, publicity does Lanny TS get because of this land? Like, do you ha in talking to maybe people at your school, is there anybody that says, you know, we've had students come here and say they've learned about us because of Lanny TS? Like, do you have you heard any stories like that? Well, each year we have a lot of people coming to the event and they visit this school, and sometimes they're like, it's so amazing, I want to be a part of. <laughs> TS, so they will try to join the ts university uh, we heard some stories like the uh, engineering and software engineering some students just joined the school because they heard about it from <laughs> and uh, we have a lot of volunteers from uh, it's what we call a dfp in quebec it's not university it's no, it's lower. It's a professional formation. I don't know if there's a, something uh, similar outside Quebec. And uh, they're all studying like computer technician. And we're giving them 
uh, opportunity to be volunteers, help people with their network problem. Uh. It's good experience for them, and at the same time, it's helping us because during the event, we have a lot of things to do. Right, right. That's it's very not smart. that we don't want to do network problems, but <laughs> I mean, we <laughs> have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, for sure. That's very clever. Um, and actually, I hope that other schools across Canada take note because, uh, I mean, it's a great advertising thing, uh, not to mention it's a great event for people who attend the school and otherwise. So I think it's great all around. Yeah, it's great, uh, great visibility for the school. Mm -hmm. so. I saw someone mentioning in chat about getting discounts through hotels local if they mention Lane ETS. And I know that you guys did have um, similar things, not with hotels, but I know um, if you went to the subway around the corner and yeah. mentioned that you were there for Lane ETS, you got like a, a deal for five bucks for a meal sort of mm -hmm. thing. So that was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. We have some deals with restaurants around. And uh, I mean, hotels, it's work in progress. Each year, we're trying to contact everyone around the school, but you know it's downtown Montreal, so yeah. I mean, at the same time, they don't need LAN ETS to pack the the hotel. <laughs> it's downtown, yeah, it's but Blanche as well, right? You guys happen to be doing it at the end of Nuit Blanche. Uh, uh, what did you say? The the event downtown wasn't it? Is it Nuit Blanche? The white uh, night. Well, it's yeah. not it's something else in Montreal. There's several events open all night long, but yeah, it was a, a, a Nuit Blanche event, if you want to <laughs> say that right away. <laughs> my French is amazing. Don't make fun of my French. <laughs> I spoke more <laughs> French than I have my entire life that whole weekend. And even I came <laughs> back on like Monday and Tuesday, I was still speaking French, just like randomly. <laughs> and I loved it. Uh, one thing we definitely should mention is, of course, Esports Canada is doing their Esports Canada Alliance, where we're taking uh, uh, the LAN tournaments from all over Canada and using those as qualifiers to funnel into a huge national tournament. And uh, LAN ETS was the first one for this year. And the winner uh, was Hendrilisk, but he's not from Quebec. So it had to be the three people who were from Quebec who qualified through the Quebec LAN. So it was uh, Killing Spree's Jig, who finished second overall. Uh, CR Box, who I believe is part of Lag TT. Lag Xavier Dolan. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so he finished third overall. Uh, but he was second for Quebec. And then we had a tie between Alexi Wa, also from Team Killing Spree, and from FXO um, and a Desro. Uh, so Alexei Moi and Desiree, we need them to have a playoff game at some point to decide who takes the third spot uh, for Quebec. But congratulations nice to show. Jig, CR Box, and uh, Alexei Moi and Desiree mm. as well. They were really great games. Nick yeah. and I got the cast mm -hmm. in. Like, every game just was really epic and really fun. And the players were doing, um, you know, it didn't feel like canned builds too much. It felt like uh, they were really showing us new things and really trying out awesome builds. So it was a really fun event to watch and cast. It was like the last show before HOTS, and yeah, you know, it was like so exciting. I was losing my voice, but still screaming <laughs> like when like some sick plays out. It was really great. Yeah, casting was great this year. You guys also, uh, all the other... Yeah, yeah. the casters were all amazing. It was great to meet some people. Amazing. Yeah, Dave and yeah. I did really good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, and, Nick and Frank would approach uh, Ender Sword and I and say, hey, we need a break. Do you guys want to cast for like an hour? And of course, we said yes, and so we jump up and the only time that they asked us to cast was like at the end of group That's play. That's not true. Like That's before true. before the bracket had come live. So it was just no games. It was us <laughs> sitting there for an hour just trying to kill time. Like I urge everyone to go back and watch the VODs from Saturday after group play finished. And it's literally Dave and I sitting there talking about cutlery. Like we, we talked about literally nothing for like an hour and a half. And then Nick and Frank came back and they were like, oh, the bracket's starting. Oh, we'll take over again. Oh, you're a jerk, John. If you watch, we happened. were struggling too. We got people in chat to play games. And if there was ever downtime, we'd get them into a room and we'd cast the, like our fans would come in. We had some people who were watching who were really high level. So we, we had tried really that and, and we got two minutes into a game and someone's keyboard stopped working and they had to <laughs> stop. So that was the one game we got to cast in an <laughs> hour. GG. It soured the whole experience, and I'll never come back again. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, I kid. Uh, speaking of coming back, uh, plans for next year. How, well, first, well, okay. first, how long are you going to be involved? Because um, I know I was talking to you, and you were saying it's, it's hard because you get all these talented people who are volunteering, but then, you know, 
they move on, they get a job, they graduate, they move away, and then you kind of have to train the, the younger kids to do it, and then they become experienced and they move on. So how much longer are you going to be at that school and involved uh, with the land? Ooh, good be involved for another year. So next year I will be back. I don't know in which function, maybe the same, maybe, maybe new task. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, everyone, like uh, someone from 2005 is still involved is still helping this year the network team you had like three uh, old members from uh, line ets so they're still helping they have some fun it's different for them i mean it's mm -hmm. less it's not the same kind of pressure as me for example this year but i mean they're still helping and i hope i will be helping for a long time for many years after i graduate graduate from uh, yes. ets university That'd be great. Well, we Start hope we can Start something up in Ontario well. for us, too. Yeah. <laughs> There's a ton of universities uh, in the rest of Canada that we, and I'm sure you can attend. <laughs> That's true. You should just start doing uh, land consulting. And just go around <laughs> in a suit and just teach. That'd them. be a cool thing to do, yeah. Well, yeah. for now, I'm going to stick to uh, land ETS, and uh, we will see in the future. <laughs> Well, William, uh, we don't want to kick you off, but we kind of have to. We do have other guests who want to come on and steal the spotlight, and we got a lightning round to get to. Yeah, it's um, okay. My check said I had to go in yeah. four minutes. So. <laughs> Perfect. Time. We only paid you for a 20-minute slot, so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gone. Thank you for everything, and we all had a fantastic time. Um, yep. Any shout-outs you want to give um, before we shoo you away? Well, shout out to everyone at Lan ETS, volunteers, casters, except John, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All the sponsors uh, this year, there's too many. But of course, thanks a lot to the ETS University. I mean, they're always supporting us each year. But anyway, I still love you, John. I will be back I soon on the too. show. I think there's like a finals for your game. The lightning oh, for the round. lightning round? Uh, that's what I tell yeah. guests, but it's not real. <laughs> but if it ever does come to that, where the show uh, picks up so much steam that fans are beating down my door asking for a lightning round championship, I'll be sure to consider you. It will okay. have. It's no going to be the new eSport. It's going to yeah. make it. Lightning Huge. round. I will show guys. I will be listening to make sure make sure you don't say anything bad. Oh yeah, yeah. As soon as you hang up, God, <laughs> that place was a dive. I can't believe I went there. I'm William, still thank you so computer. much. Everything was amazing, and we had a pleasure casting uh, at your event, and we we'd love to participate uh, any in all the years to come. And anything that you do, just always let us know. Yeah, no problem, guys. Cool. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And Bye. when we call the group again, um, don't answer because it's for Katu, not for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to kick out. <laughs> Goodbye, thank you, William. Goodbye. Ciao. Take care, mate. So, Mr. Katu isn't uh, doesn't seem to be present right now. I know he's from Ottawa, so I know it's not a time uh, issue. Oh, no, uh, it's not like he got mistaken by the time, but maybe we should just run through some uh, other things there, Johnny. Uh, well, yeah, what do we sure. have next? Hot, 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 hot. <laughs> Thanks, maybe, maybe I had a whole about... introduction planned, and then you just you ruined it. See, guys, I was <laughs> I was the hipster. I wanted to talk about hots before everyone else. Wanted yeah, but to talk when about... you wanted to talk about hots, it was just you had like 19 pages of notes <laughs> that were just like according to this. <laughs> I'm thorough, John. Sorry, our fans want to know this stuff. Good job, John. Uh, yeah, supposedly there's a game coming out sometime tonight. I'm not familiar with it. I've been, pl I've been playing SimCity. I wouldn't know anything about how, it. How is that? How is the SimCity? Okay, SimCity... I be the next eSport. I remember being super excited about the newest SimCity like a year or two ago, seeing it somewhere, a video, a beta, or something, and being like, awesome, I really like SimCity, I like The Sims, everything about it, fantastic, love Maxis. Yeah. Totally forgot about it up until two days before it was launched, everyone said, Sims comes out in... Oh, I'm getting word that the overlays are missed. Yeah, Is William left. See, they fell off. Yeah. I'll Tony's on stream. PZSE song. Exactly <laughs> what Tony looks like. So, yeah. Um, and then I heard about it two days before it was going to be launched, and I was like, sweet, Sim City, can't wait. It's going to be amazing. And then it came out, and it was basically Satan in <laughs> digital format, and wow. no one liked it. But. Most of the criticism I heard where it's DRM, um, the servers are slow, 
and um, the game's like not really complete. And so I did a bit of research and I talked to Ender Sword, who had bought the game the day it came yeah. out. Because he was like, either I'm going to buy it now or I'm just going to wait three weeks and buy it after everything dies down. So I bought it and I played it for two hours and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Oh. I didn't experience any problems with the server. Um, nice. I was logged in. I was playing within <clears throat> like two minutes of having the game installed and everything was good to go. And I haven't oh, noticed right. any like glaring errors or anything. I don't really like the the size restraints they put on the game in terms of how big your city can be. But having mm -hmm. said that, I've only chose the very first region and the very first like spot in that region. So it might just be a small region to begin with. What's um, your uh, What's your city called? Uh, That's like Johnsville. It's Saint not John. John you going? Yeah, I named it Saint John. <laughs> the pollution is terrible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I made it uh, Lucton Valley, I think. It means wow. absolutely nothing. And I was hoping Whoa. I would never have to Sounds tell it. Sounds like a really rich it. place. I don't think exactly. I could live there. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> My girlfriend's laughing because she her city is much better than mine. What's her city called? We'll be the judge of that. Uh, she her. kept she the default judge. name, so it was something. What's the name? Default name? I bet you when she plays Civilization, she leaves all the cities default. Oh, here, it's I like, just cited Rome. It's like Brafton name. Follies or something. Yeah. Anyway, she kept Brafton. the default name. That was her big red was she, she was scared about making decisions in the game, so she started it up and was like, I can't play this. There's too many decisions. I have to name my city. I have to choose where to put things. I hate it. <laughs> and then like five hours later, she was still playing, and I would just hear her scream out like, Earthquake? What? And so uh, <laughs> she's converted, and she loves it. She's played it more than I do, so... If you're on the fence about buying it, I would say go for it. I've read other reviews that are like, I looked into the employment rate and 20% of your people are unemployed at any given time and the rest are retiree. And I was just like, what? Like, I, <laughs> I'm never going to get that into the game that I care about how many people are retired in my you're city. You're virtual citizens. I know. I, I want to build like nice roads and have a building <laughs> that I can live in. But, you know, on the surface, it's fantastic and I like it so far. There's, there's something that I always had problems with uh, the... The SimCity games. Um, I would always find that I would start off well, and my city would do all these great things. But there'd always be this critical point where I've just I've messed up so badly, and I'm just like, screw it, I'm done with this city. I'm just gonna go make a new city. So it feels like you're constantly starting with a new block of clay, and you're just chiseling away until you get. Ah, it doesn't look good. And you just keep moving on. I felt it was so difficult just to get to that point where you're like building wonders in your city, and you have your big amphitheater, and you have like your giant sports arena and stuff. Like I could never get to that point. Because my city stick would just fall in shambles. Go to slums and then the crime rate goes up. You guys are terrible mayors. <laughs> I tried. I really? Because I have a sweet house on the water. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that you make me want to buy it. You make me want to buy it. So yeah, that's the big game that came out recently. So <laughs> that's all we have to talk about. <laughs> So yeah, Heart of the Swarm is coming out for me. It comes out 3 a.m. local time tonight. I do not plan to stay up and play, but as soon as I, I get out for it tomorrow, I will or not. I think I'll uh. be laddering my butt off. Nick, you have so, this week off. Why would you not? It's March well, break. Well, I get tired <laughs> and I go to sleep. But no, seriously. Um, if we're if let's say we're playing, are the servers gonna go down at least for an hour when they're upgrading everything, or is it just gonna be like if I'm laddering, let's say I'm laddering all the way to two a.m. and suddenly, bam, it's hot. Hey, CR box is in the chat. Yeah. Hey. Oh, CR congratulations! Box. Did you know that you won? I've talked to Believe about this, and he just I I think Believe doesn't know how to use the computer or how to read. Wow. So yeah, I tried to explain to him. You know what, Sierra Box, if you want to actually private message us so that we can just get your contact info, if you are indeed Xavier <clears throat> Dolan, because I have no idea how many CR Boxes are out there. He's um, got to be the only one. Message, uh, message the Esports Canada TV person who uh, is up there, maybe if they message again. Uh, yeah, you qualified for the IESF tournament, so... Uh, <laughs> it's, you... good. it's good he has to tune into the show and we just yeah, tell him. Yeah, find out. <laughs> I've been trying to contact him for a while. Yanni, if you're watching, I asked you for his information. And you're like, yeah, yeah, dude. Oh, that's why he's here. <laughs> Fantastic. Believe, man. Believe. Uh, there are a ton of events. Before we get into Deep Hot's talk, and mm. I mean, yep. people have been watching the, the live stream, the invasion all, uh, all day, so we won't get too deep into it. But um, there are a ton of events going on what, with MLG next weekend and Hot's being launched this week, so I would like to go through uh, those. Yep. All right. uh, uh, first of all, ba 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 ba. Uh, who made the title for that? That looks poopy. Uh, we have the Heart of the Swarm launch event 
in Toronto at Net Effect mm -hmm. Cafe. Uh, this will be tomorrow night at 8 o'clock local time. Uh, Net Effect Cafe at 9 Isabella Street, Toronto, Ontario. Uh, supposedly it's going to be a ton of food. It's not and... 8, I think it's 10, isn't it? Um, it says 8 in the poster, and I think that was a typo. I uh, think it, it says it's 8 10. on the Facebook group as well. But sure, 10 o'clock. Maybe it's get there at 8 and wait outside. And... I'm going at 8. <laughs> yeah, you can actually go ahead. It is a land cafe, so That's go true. and check out the computer. Yeah, I guess the, the actual menu. event won't start until 10. Um, but yeah, it's just a bunch of stuff. fun, casual games, um, food and drinks and whatnot, and people just hanging out and uh, having fun. And I believe it's $20, and that covers you for food and drinks and whatnot and be able to play all night. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Fantastic. So um, head to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash esportscanada, and you can get... Uh, all the info is listed there in our events page. Mm -hmm. um, as well, Toronto... Bit, John. What? Well, Bring I want to cover bit. Toronto first and get them out of the way, and then I can spend hours standard, on my stuff. Standard, standard, standard. <laughs> Katu's in chat. He's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. You know what? Katu can wait. Let's talk about Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do want to get through all of the events, just because there's so many. Okay. Uh, what if we? Uh, you guys can. That you can also do the overlays at the same time. Is that too much? Uh, yeah, you if you guys want to talk about the event, uh, I'll, I'll bring perfect. him in. Nick, do you and want to then... talk about the event? Which one? <laughs> we have two. We have. Well, we already talked about Toronto. Let's talk about John's event. Um, in. Uh... Pardon? The Barcraft. Talk about the Barcraft Nick on Sunday. You know what I'm saying, Nick? Yes, I am. Barcraft, guys, uh, March 17th. It's going to be for NLG Dallas. It's going to be at Loki Lounge, which is where we held our last Barcraft. And um starts at 1 p.m. It's going to be one of the first, I guess, one of the first hot Barcrafts that's going to be happening. So I'm really yeah. excited for that. At least for Toronto, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Loki Lounge, 577 King Street West. Okay, yeah, check if you're in the out. Toronto area, guys, come check it out. The, it should be a big event, and the, the venue is actually really cool, and the owner really enjoys his esports as well. So. Mm. Uh, boo, doo, 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 doo. Oh, jeez. I'm just trying to bring up, because I know there's three other bar crafts that just popped up yesterday, so I want to make sure that we get all of those mentioned as well. Oh, let's doo, do that. Doo, 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 doo. So, Katu, I see you in the chat. What we're doing is we're just going over as many bar crafts and stuff in our areas as possible, because obviously there's this game called HOTS coming out that people want to know about, and... Uh, <laughs> So we're just, uh, so if, if one of these is in an area near where some people are watching, just to make sure that they check it out, really. What's uh, happening in so those are live bar crafts happening right now? Uh, no, these are happening this upcoming weekend on yeah. Sunday. Well, I, you have them up, John? I have uh, them up. Yep, uh, UBC will be hosting one um, that's in Vancouver. And it says the location's to be announced, but everything else is confirmed. I'm sure they're just picking the bar. Uh, and that'll be at uh, noon, and it runs until 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, if you donate 50 cents to get in, you get unlimited NOS all day. What? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. That is amazing. Sounds yeah. decent. <laughs> <laughs> and then in Edmonton, we do have um, MLG as well on Sunday at the old Strathcona Rack, which is an awesome name for a bar. And they have $4 draft all day. And yeah, great food, great deals, and there's no cover, and it starts at 10 a.m. all the way until the finals. That's how Barcraft should be done. I'm tired of seeing these events where it's like we start at four and run till seven, and you're just like, what? Nope. I want to be there for nine hours, <laughs> drunk off my ass. <laughs> I want to drink Nos for nine yeah, hours. Yeah, I want to drink nothing but Nos. Nobody can tell me I can't drink Nos. <laughs> I paid my fifty cents. As well, really close to me, uh, in Charlottetown. There's another MLG Barcraft, and they run from 2 until 7. Oh, wait, 9. 9, that's 9. A little better. I would feel better. real bad if it was the exact time that I just ripped on. Uh, 2 <laughs> o'clock until 9 o'clock at The Wave, and that's at the W.A. Murphy Student Center in Charlottetown. So you can find all those events listed on our Facebook page, and we implore you to go to them. Uh, two more events to get through because it is such a busy week. Land War 5 is happening this weekend, uh, all weekend, um, I think you have to be a student of U of IT. U of OIT. Yeah. Is that? of Ontario Institute of Technology. Perfect. Uh, but they'll be streaming from there all weekend long. Nick and Frank, are you casting at all? Of course. Like it. God. 
What do we have to do to get rid of you two? <laughs> <laughs> so it's 40 hours of land starting 10 o'clock Friday night, running all the way till 2 o'clock on Sunday. So you have a chance to go to that all weekend and then go and drink your face off for St. Patrick's Day slash Barcraft at Loki Perfect. Lounge. So 100% do that. And I will bring us up now. And it's just me. Perfect. Uh, I'm running an event this weekend in beautiful St. John, New Brunswick. The port city, none of you know. Where uh, it's going to be a hot tournament, 1v1s for bronze, silver, gold, 1v1s for platinum, diamond, masters, and 2v2s for all skill levels will be happening Saturday. Uh, 10 a.m. is warm up, and the tournament starts at 11. And I got a ton of prizes and food and other stuff planned, so please come out to that at 77 Catherwood Street, uh, also known as Gamezilla in St. John. Oh man, I'm failing so hard with these overlays. Wow, esports is alive and kicking in Canada. Huh? I know that was post, the most events. We obviously didn't name them all. I know we missed Ottawa. I'm sorry, Tattoo. I well, was I'm... actually wondering if you'd mentioned it or not. It is happening at the Clock Tower Pub. I actually pulled it up. Nice. Um, and it's happening on March 17th, Sunday. So it's just going to be for the finals day, starting 1 p.m. until 8 p.m. And uh, there's almost always some like swag giveaways. Um, it, the Clock Tower Brew Pub has their own brew, which is delicious. It's like five dollars a pint. And uh, yeah, nice little microbrewery. Good Starcraft. No reason Jeez. to not go out. No Fantastic. cover either. And we did we did know about that, but I wanted to leave it to you yeah. since yeah, you were going to be why. there live. It, it's hosted by it's Brianna, right? Yeah, yeah. Brianna and Chris and Bill. Yeah, good people. So that's awesome. I'm glad that uh, glad that uh, Barcrafts are live all across Canada. It's really good to hear. Fantastic. Now that all of that is out of the way, he's already spoken. You've heard his voice now and many times before. Welcome to the show, Kevin Katu Albert. Thanks for having me, guys. This is my like first live interview. I've done the, like over email stuff, but uh, never, never <laughs> live in person. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, now I'm extra excited. <laughs> that means you can't screw up, though. There's a lot of pressure. What, uh, oh. Why? Who told you I screwed up? <laughs> you did not see the start of the show. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so good thing airs. you came half hour late. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. That's good. No, yeah. I was, just, I was just caught in traffic. I went out to run a couple errands, and it just got crazy out there. A oh, little bit of ice. Against you. I don't we know. Were, when we the sun goes down this it. time of year, it's not good. It's a time change. <laughs> All the snow the that melted, change. the water just turns to ice, you get accidents. It's a river. <laughs> it's a scary place. Good okay. old Canada. Perfect. So we will get underway with the uh, easy stuff. Where are you from? Where do you live now? And how did you get involved with esports? So I was actually born in Montreal, uh, spent a bit of time in Kitchener, and currently living in Ottawa, where I went to University of Ottawa. Uh, I actually graduated with a Bachelor of Commerce, specialization in finance, uh, back in May of 2012, so not too long ago. And I got started in esports with the University of Ottawa uh, StarCraft Club, which is why I brought it up. And we played in the CSL, had a ton of fun. We weren't the uh, best team around, <laughs> but it, it was a ton of fun. And, you know, we'd basically have a LAN uh, once or twice a month. And we'd rent a room at the university, bring our computers down. And I actually live like an hour and 20 minutes by bus from school. But I was like, screw it, we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a ton we're of fun. We're playing games. Yeah, nice. man. Like... You know, play some StarCraft 2, but every once in a while some Warcraft 3, and I think we even got some Worms Armageddon in there <laughs> once. I don't know if you guys remember that game, but it's yes. awesome. It's super good. It's like this little worm game where you just shoot weapons at each other. It's turn-based. But, um, yeah, so I got started with them, and I really didn't even know anything about, like, the StarCraft scene or anything like that. I played tons of video games, uh, mostly FPSs, and I played a bit of Brood War in high school. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my buddies actually, like, kind of cracked the game that we all had our own copies I swear um, <laughs> and actually he made it 30 megabits large it would only had one map labyrinth had no campaigns no nothing and uh, he made a 30 megabit version that he hid on our high school's like server because <laughs> you have like what is it that cold shutdown or whatever that clears everything so you had to right. install every time you boot it yeah. up and so uh, yeah I don't know. That's that's how so I got clever. into esports. No one bought. Yeah, man. One. He was he was he was a, still a smart kid. I gotta say. <laughs> it's your duty to report him to the police now. You know that. Right? <laughs> I mean, you I wouldn't, wouldn't want to take. A pair, would you? Well, I wouldn't <laughs> want to take you know a clever person like that doing such good to the world off uh, off the streets. 
Think you can, right. you can wow. tell us his name privately after the interview. <laughs> okay. We'll go uh, <laughs> ask him for some favors. So, uh, yeah, I started casting for the University of Ottawa CSL games. And uh, over time, I ended up going to IPL3, which uh, would actually worked there as a volunteer. And uh, I met some people from Playhem there, and then they brought me on to Playhem. And from there, I started casting a heck of a lot and tons and tons of different events, uh, as you guys all know. For sure, and you have, uh, you've had so many cast experiences under your belt. So, you know, let's say for people who are starting to cast, what strengths do you think a person should have when venturing into professional casting? Resilience. Yeah. Lots and lots of resilience. You've got to mitigate those crits. Uh, <laughs> but no, like, in all seriousness, really, you do need to be resilient. Um, if it's not, you know, people saying that you're not casting great, it's mm -hmm. just the amount of casting that you're going to be doing before you get some solid um, so like solid positions. And even those are few and far between. So you got to be resilient and really love casting. And uh, not, I guess, uh, not do it with the intent. Because um, I'm sure you guys know as well, there's not that many paying gigs out there. And you're, you're not oh, really... Oh, for sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if you like casting, cast for a lot of great tournaments uh, that you can be casting for, but you know, know what you're getting into, and uh, I guess mitigate your dreams and aspirations of how quickly you'll grow as well. Um, now, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, put a damper on it or anything. But if you take, if you come into it with a bit more of a realistic point of view, then uh, hopefully, you know, you won't get crushed and lose your motivation, which I've sadly seen happen to a lot of casters. Oh, for sure. I mean, like, especially when Frank and I cast, definitely there's going to be haters in the stream, but really you just have to keep going and just keep doing what you love, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Could I you tell most us... Of the haters oh. are towards you, Nick. I don't know. No, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. You turn people against me. You're a terrible person. <laughs> that's <a fun> stream. <laughs> um, Katya, could you speak a little bit about um, your switch from casting to now, I believe you're, a pro, you're in a pro gaming team. You're part of Clarity Gaming now. Yeah. How's that switch been? Um, well, it was a little difficult. Um, mostly, I was just not having enough time anymore to really cast. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I graduated, and casting, like I said, you know, there's not that many paying gigs. And so I wanted to start focusing my attentions onto uh, playing. Because playing, you kind of just make your own luck, or you can try to make your own luck a little bit more. Uh, you just, you know, you train as hard as you can, and not everyone has the talent to make it. And I, I'm still not sure if I would be able to make it, but uh, yeah, that's why I decided to transition from casting. Uh, in the end, my grandfather actually got very ill, and my grandmother has been ill for a long time, and he was taking care of her. So I actually stepped back from the game uh, completely for quite a few months there, and I've been playing full-time since uh, about mid-January. So I played Wings of Liberty uh, almost exclusively because Lanny TS uh, was coming up. Oh, and I for sure. I to do my best there, and I think we're going to talk about that a bit later. And uh, now Heart of the Swarm is out, so 100% Heart of the Swarm. And I hope to be able to post up some results uh, in the next you know, two or three months. Nice. Awesome. You play Zerg, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. Like, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> You've already picked the, the best race. Um, I don't know. Uh, have you seen the IEM uh, World Championships? Yeah, no. Zerg is very underpowered in HOTS. I'm not. I, I don't want to put those words out there, John. Oh, man. John you know what? I'm pretty sure all the Zergs just got together and said, "Yo, let's just keep it cool for the start, so that they don't nerf us, and then we'll just come out strong, and we'll get one, two, three in every event." And everybody Feigning like, weakness. Feigning yeah, weakness. Well, that's I'm on to you guys. I can see it. Lanny TS top like four people was it Zerg, I think. Desro and Alexei Mob were the first non-Zergs to get it, and they. Yeah, so I'm very no, bitter. Yeah. Wings of very Liberty. Bitter. Wings of Liberty. Um, I think everyone feels that Zerg is is pretty pretty potent. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. You could go on for hours and hours on this. Yeah, we, but we, I haven't played Hots yet, like at all. Never touched it. I was just focused on Wings of Liberty because uh, I, you know, I hadn't really been playing or I had been away from the game for so long. So I really wanted to try to do well, and I didn't do so well at Land ATS, So that was disappointing. But uh, now it's Heart of the Swarm, whole new game. Whole new game. Did you make it out of, of group play at LAN, ETS? Not even. Um, no. Who'd you have in your group? MYI Grape and Alex Simois. 
Oh, oh well, okay. So, yeah, good luck yeah. with that. A couple of pretty high-ranked players there. It wasn't the best group, but eh, I could have played better. I really could have. Yeah. That's, That's the spirit. spirit. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, you said that you were focusing hard on wall. You're looks like you're looking towards hot. I noticed at the event also one of the co-casters, he came from, well, he's from Windsor, but Brent Frank Ribery, uh, yeah. you were chatting with him. And uh, you were actually participating in some law games. So, are there other esports possibly that you might uh, venture into, or you basically know I'm going to be hot, hot, hot through and through? I'd never be satisfied if I didn't succeed at StarCraft. Mm -hmm. Like, I would be, I'd be so sad if like I ended up moving on to another game. Um, you know, if there was a position opening or something that was paying. Um, and could sustain me a little bit better, then it would be hard for me to turn that down. But I'd be really disappointed that I didn't do better in StarCraft. Because StarCraft, I mean, we all know it, right? It's just such a fantastic game. The, the possibilities are endless. And every single game you play, even if you win, um, despite if you lose, you can still play better. No matter what, you can always have played a better game. And I just absolutely love that about it. And it's not just like the little things you could have done better. There's some big things that you can yeah. do better just incorporating different strategies and i'm super psyched for hots because i hear that um it's going to be a lot more micro base instead of this kind of like macro up 200 200 army battle and then someone wins yeah i was I watching a bit of hots today and they were just saying how zerg the way zerg plays is a lot more like brood war than it was wings of liberty um you know attacking a lot like keeping the protoss down little fights here and there and i, I was really excited for that yeah, I think it's going to be not just great for the players and make it a lot more interesting for us as well, but for the viewers. The viewers, you know, it's going to make more high-paced games. Um, I'm sure I don't have to tell you guys how fun it is to watch, you know, your 10th Zerg versus Protoss in a day. <laughs> and it's like having nothing to talk about for the first 10 minutes or so. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm really psyched for HOTS, and uh, I hope that it's not just an early thing, you know, because of course it will settle down a bit, but I hope yeah. that it still uh, stays around those micro engagements. Yeah, I was hearing some of the stream numbers, they were hitting uh, 100,000. At one point everybody was like, StarCraft is back. I hope I hope it is, uh, this well, is a sign of good things to come. For the trailer, for the HOTS trailer release, there was 150k um, when the stream went live, so wow. that was pretty impressive. But uh, I realize I sidestepped your question. Um, I do play some League of Legends for fun. Yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, I don't think that I would be transitioning to uh, a pro League of Legends situation anytime soon. It's... And you got four people to blame if something goes wrong. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's so... maybe one of the better and worst things about League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> it does true. foster a little bit too much hate, perhaps. <laughs> but it's, it's a lot of fun, and particularly when you're playing with friends. Because um, when you play as much StarCraft as I play, when you have your friends who you know have jobs or are going to school and maybe don't play as much StarCraft as I do, it's not quite as fun for them to play StarCraft, and and they don't want to play as much StarCraft either, right? So yeah. uh, League of Legends every once in a while is fun, and uh, yeah, but I don't think I don't think any other esports coming in. But Brent, uh, he's been doing a lot with League of Legends. He's been He's been pretty successful there. He's, he's a great guy. I met him actually at Lanny, Lanny TS uh, three, year, three years ago. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, he picked me up in Ottawa. He was driving up from Windsor, Ontario to oh, Montreal. Okay. And uh, he picked me up in Ottawa. And, uh, yeah, man, we had a, we had a blast. That's like Everyone uh, the blast at Lanny TS. Yeah. Yeah, that's like those stories that uh, Sean Pott tells him and his brother picking up people in foreign cities and driving <laughs> Yeah, Same exactly. Stories, man. Except that I was the, you know, 24, 23 year old person that I said I was. <laughs> <laughs> was totally actually, lied, man. You didn't totally. end up killing anyone. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, Except um, in the video. So, so speaking of LANTS, actually, and I know you saying you're from the Ottawa region, it makes a lot of sense that you would go to LANTS. But what actually makes LANTS so special for you? Because you you seem to be frequenting it. Um, why is it so important, or what is it about LANTS that's important, or, or even why is it so important to you? I gotta say, friends. Like LANTS, I almost always go with friends. Uh, three years ago was my first time going, and I didn't have any close friends. But in the two events since, it's been, I go with like five, six friends, and we just get to play together, which is something that 
we don't get to do as much. Um, so I'm 26. I actually tw turned 26 two days ago. Yeah. Uh, well, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy, happy, thank you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday man. Uh, so, like, a lot of my friends, you know, they've moved. They're either doing, like, doctorate degrees or they they already have jobs. They have, you know, long-term girlfriends, uh, wives. So for us to just get together and have fun is difficult to do. And LAN ETS, even though it's only two hours away, still convenient. It's still like, oh, bam, you know, three days booked where we can get together and have fun, yeah. go out in the evenings, you know, have supper, a couple of drinks, and uh, it's, it's good friend time, um, which I don't know. I don't know how old you guys are or what, you know, social situations you're in. You, I'll be 18 soon. Stuff in the back. <laughs> there. Two so children I'm, and a wife, killing esports, you don't man. You to see your friends as often as, uh, as no. you might like. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what's made it so special for me. But just in general, you know, I mean, it's 72 hours of gaming. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's not the like. <laughs> it's not the like. True. That's a, that's a very valid point. I had a, a blast. It was the first time that I had gone. Um, but I could easily see making this a tradition each year. Uh, even though, like, from Toronto, it's it's a fair trek, a good six-hour trip. And uh, John took the, the flight over, but uh, one of his... Uh, friends who came and drove actually drove nine hours to get there so people drive from very far away uh it'd be nice to live in ottawa and be that close uh yeah. that would be very well, nice talk to brent i think he said it was like 10 and a half 11 hours or something from windsor yeah, so he had to drive to toronto and we had to take him the rest of the way he he's a trooper that's for sure yeah that's pretty intense but i mean that's what what happens in esports like i can tell you uh, i've driven to columbus twice to indianapolis driven to raleigh north carolina twice uh yeah. providence rhode island like if you want to make it oh you were at providence yeah uh, i was also there mm. yeah providence was like an easy one it was like seven and a half hours from ottawa I was like, nice, <laughs> yeah. you know this isn't too bad <laughs> Because, like, Indianapolis, Columbus are 15 hours. Raleigh's, like, 16, 17 hours. And, uh, but, yeah, that's eSports, man. Uh, or, rather, that's North America, right? Yeah. We're just <laughs> too big. We're too big. <laughs> too much space. Agreed. So, uh, I want you to talk about Clarity Gaming, um, what you're doing with them, and what, what's going on with the team. I mean, they've exploded as of late. I was adminning a tournament Friday and Saturday, and they had two out of the four players in the finals out of like a 64 person bracket. Um, was that the Flaming Cow? Flaming Cow, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Saravati and uh, Juke2. Juke2, yeah. So uh, we actually just had Juke2 and our, we just had a switch for the Clarity Gaming House. Uh, so we have a training facility in New York State and uh, we just had Juke2 and Yong move back to Korea. And uh, we have two new Koreans now living in the house, uh, Motoke and Shuttle. So Shuttle, some people might remember him from New Star Hoso. Mm -hmm. um, needs to play for them. And then Motoke used to actually play Counter-Strike professionally in Korea. And mm -hmm. uh, made the switch to StarCraft II um, maybe six months ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, so we had some uh, high hopes for them. And that's what's happening at the gaming house. As far as what Is I'm doing with them... Is the gaming house, sorry to interrupt you, um, is the gaming house reserved kind of strictly for Koreans? Does it a chance for them to come over and experience the North American scene and, and help out the team that way? Or is it going to be something where anyone in North America can go to the house as well? So it, it depends on a player-to-player -player basis. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely you have to show your commitment and how much you're willing to train just day in, day out, and really be serious about playing. Um, Specifically, we had Juktu and Yong uh, in North America to give them a chance at those foreign tournaments. And uh, now we have Motoke and Shuttle, and they were supposed to go to the IPL6 open bracket. Right. Um, but now, you know, obviously, that's not looking so hot <laughs> unless there's some kind of like Hail Mary purchaser of sorts. Right. But uh, nonetheless, you know, hopefully there'll be some other events and also it'll give a chance for um, those our Korean players to also play in the North American qualifiers uh, for the MLG events or other of uh, those events. And it's a little harsh to say, but the North American scene might not be quite as strong as the Korean scene. No uh, way. So fight for those qualifier <laughs> spots Since does when? you an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and a key thing, really, when you're playing StarCraft 2 is you're playing, you know, like 8, 9, 10 hours a day, 7 days a week. 
So just not having distractions, uh, everyone's heard it a million times over, uh, just being able to live in a house that's dedicated to that, where someone else is handling oh, food, yeah. someone else is handling cleaning, um, even just like, you know, friends or family that aren't around, you know, you don't want to avoid them when you're like, when I'm in Ottawa, I still see my friends every once in a while, right? And, you know, I don't get to see them that often. So when I get a chance, like, bam, I'm going. But if I was in New York, well, maybe I'd actually practice. Um, mm -hmm. during that Seriously, time yeah. and be a little yeah. bit more focused on my StarCraft 2 play. Less distractions. Yeah, exactly. So uh, just give them a chance to flourish as much as possible. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Did I miss um, anything? No. I should take that... away their Reddit just to make sure. No distractions, no Reddit. No, <laughs> <Yeah>. other... <laughs> no internet, just game internet. Yeah, just oh, no man, internet. That would be terrible. Just the UDP ports. <laughs> <laughs> And so, uh, what's coming up for you in the near future, other than practicing your heart out for uh, hearts or hots? Sorry, literally practicing my heart out for the heart of the swarm. Yeah. Um, like IPL six was something that I was thinking about to go in the open bracket, and if it was still happening, I would have um, still been playing probably Wings of Liberty. But um, yeah, just playing a lot, a lot of Heart of the Swarm. Going to be streaming uh, quite a bit more. Over the past week, I've actually been playing the StarCraft and StarCraft Brood War campaigns. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just getting nice. myself prepped and hyped for Heart of the Swarm. Nice. And I never played through them, actually, the original campaign. So that was that was. Yeah, fun. neither of us. Well, you must have been so lost playing SC2. The story made no sense. Well, when you install StarCraft 2, you have those oh, slides they do. You're that right. go yeah. Those it's things I skip game, through because I don't care about the story. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know. I'm a terrible person. Katsu, uh, at this point, I will give you the chance to plug uh, where we can follow you, Twitter, Facebook, website, uh, stream. So, ClarityGaming.com. Uh, That's where you can find our team. Um, Katsu StarCraft on Twitter, on Twitch, previously on Own3D, but that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> and uh, even on Team Liquid, Katu StarCraft. So everywhere, Katu StarCraft, Katu StarCraft. Fantastic. And that's about it. Thanks a lot for having me on the show. No problem. Um, I do see on the Clarity Gaming website, uh, it's under construction right now, but it says March 22nd. Uh, it goes live again. So I'm excited to see what they have. Hmm. Yeah. I was actually unaware that it was under construction. Yeah. I, I remember going to the site must before. must have like, just, just gone down. Yeah. I think it was they just this going. week or last, but we will see. Um, don't think that we let you off the hook this easily, because there is still the lightning round. And Sweet. because I'm home, I don't have the graphic for the lightning round, so... Ksh, boom! Dark screen and lightning. <laughs> lightning round. Perfect. Sound effects are the best, man. They're so <laughs> well, if you like it's sound effects, cool. you'll love the lightning oh, round. No. So, the lightning round, Katu, I know you've seen the 25 episodes previous to this one, but for anyone in chat who's joining for the first time ever, following as a fan of Katu, they came here to see him get destroyed in the lightning round, here's how it goes. I'm going to ask you 10 skill-testing, physically demanding questions, and I need you to answer them as truthfully and as quickly as possible. So, Katu, are you ready for the lightning round? I am ready. Fantastic. And I'll say that Frank had a pretty big hand in tonight's questions, so... When they're bad, you'll know why. Question number one. Katu, are you ready? Ready. Bulbasaur, Squirtle, or Charmander? Charmander. Oh, I was a Bulbasaur bad. guy. No points. Question number two. <laughs> Give us your best brood... I Pokemon Red. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was red as... Well, maybe. I don't remember. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Question number two. Give us your best Brood War Overlord impression. I just played a bunch of it, so... Wow. <laughs> that was fantastic. That was, that was fantastic. That was two points. Was really I good. award you two points. That was really good. Uh, two points after two questions. You are on pace for 10 out of 10. Me saying that does jinx it. And yes, that was on purpose. Question number three. Brood War Lurkers or Heart of the Swarm Swarm Hosts? Brood War Lurkers. Ooh. Complexity Rise agrees with you. Yeah, man. Brood War Lurkers are so good. Nothing to say about it. <laughs> Fantastic. You don't, have, you don't have to wait for the swarm host to or for the locust to pop out. It's That's just true. it's always attacking. Yeah. Can't argue with that. So I will give you the point. Uh, three nothing. Not bad. 
Uh, question number four. Uh, what would you do if you had no fear? Jeez, that's a that's a good wow. one. Yeah, that got deep. If I had no, if I had no fear, walk around naked all the time. Oh, just, that's just the correct that. answer. Dude, th this is a genius marketing move. If you have no fear, just be like naked all the time. Just have some blurry spots on your cam. It's a total marketing gift. It's flawless. <laughs> <laughs> but I have fear, so I can't do it. Ain't, ain't nobody want to see spots, Blurry spots. Blurry it's spots. I'm not sure how you being naked all the time goes with a marketing idea, but... Uh, I award you no points. It's um, a gimmick. Three, <laughs> three <laughs> points after four questions. Question number five. Who has a better radio voice, yourself or me? And this was a frank you. question. I did not make this up. Sorry? You, I think. Me? You, I think. Uh, I'm incorrect. A little, I'm a little more nasally. The answer that, was Endersword. So, oh, no man. points. <laughs> Dang, that's a good answer C, the right answer. <laughs> And Endersword has a new video out right now uh, called Hot Units Update, and it's quite oh, funny, okay. so please go check it out. Maybe I'll play it uh, as I uh, lead the show out, but it's like four minutes long, so I probably won't. Question number six. Uh, you're at three points after five questions. Admirable. Question six. Predict the ending cutscene for Heart of the Swarm and use the word destructible rocks at least seven times. <laughs> Oh man! So an ending scene of Heart of the Swarm, mm -hmm. and I have to use Destructible Rock seven times. Yes. Count them down for you. Yeah, Nick's got to count them down. Well, here's to four and zero. Oh. Um, <laughs> Jim, you finally meet me here behind the Destructible Rocks, where we are safe for the next three to four minutes. <laughs> If you cannot expand behind the destructible rock soon, then you will die. Oh, man. <laughs> you want me to use two? <laughs> I got this. I got this. You got it. Behind destructible rocks, door number one. <laughs> the first expansion. Behind destructible <laughs> rocks, door number two. Cheating for the win. Uh is a brand new vulture because yours is getting pretty damn old Ooh. and behind destructible rocks door number three is a no longer infested kerrigan Ooh. Mm. jim rayner i can't do a jim rayner voice well kerrigan <laughs> that's pretty good that's pretty good well kerrigan gonna have to go with that brand new vulture you've betrayed me too many times <laughs> So going behind the destructible rock door number two, Rainer gets into his vulture, lays down a widow mine, which kills, or rather, a spider mine, which Ooh. kills Kerrigan, who gets entombed below some destructible rocks. Bravo. Bravo. Well done. I'm not a writer for Blizzard, so thankfully <laughs> the actual ending way better than I'm that. Super, I, I was oh, expecting God. just like, I'm okay, um, the scene is like, Kerrigan shows up and she's by some destructible... I thought you were just going to describe it, but you acted it out. Uh, yeah, and that wasn't at all what I was looking for, so though. I can't award you any points. Uh, but good try. <laughs> uh, question number seven. You are at four points. Uh, an Ottawa <laughs> Senators player, uh, you said you are from Ottawa, uh, got knocked out by a Maple Leafs player on the weekend. Um, there was a huge ordeal about it. It sparked this huge conversation about uh, fighting and hoppy, hockey. Um, there's no question. Uh, you just got knocked out by the, the, the Leafs, so that's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, question sure. number eight. Uh, rank are the Leafs this season? Uh, behind Montreal? That's about all I know. <laughs> question number <laughs> eight. John is not a Leafs fan at all. <laughs> <laughs> question eight. Um, you're crowned a prince. Um, do you take the princeship? What? Of course. <laughs> well, then his name would be... If I'm a prince, then I can have my own, also, other gaming house for Clarity Gaming. Funding becomes a non-issue. Done. Sold. Oh, that's okay. actually pretty genius. 
But then your name would be. Anyway, that was Sean's question. You got the stickest gaming house in all of esports. But, it's a but, palace. But your name would be Prince Albert. That's fine. I got the <laughs> oh, guess. I get what you're trying to go, so it all works. Everyone can go and Google what that means. Question number nine. Uh, I'll award you a point because you outsmarted me. Uh, I think you're at five <laughs> now. Question nine. Uh, your MLG predicted this weekend. Give me, give me top three. Man, I, can I pull up a list of the players there? Ooh. I mean, Killer's going to take it. Clarity Killer will be at the MLG event, and he's going to take it. <laughs> um, MLG Dallas. Who do we got? I mean, I know Stefano's going to be there, so mm -hmm. I expect a top six from him, but probably not. Probably like sixth, maybe fifth, something like that. Oh, I can't find a list. Players. Someone has a link. Quinn, link me. Quinn, are you participating at MLG Dallas? Uh, I am not. Did anyone okay, see the Twitter conversation what? that happened between Idra and Rotterdam when Rotterdam asked him a question about oh, a patch? God. Before the game, he was like, Idra, like, when you go to MLG, like, do you want there to be a patch before, or would you rather it be after? And then Idra was like, I didn't qualify. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he ended, er, so Idra lost to, who was it? Chad, uh, motherfucking Jones. Oh, yeah, Minigun. Right, Idra or Minigun. Man, Minigun's got his number. But Minigun's got a tough bracket, right? He's playing up against Life in the first round. Yeah, good and... luck. You know, Chad and the fucking Jones or not. <laughs> <laughs> a tough opponent. Um, so, Life, I think we're going to see him... I think we're going to see him actually go down to Pult. I just love Pult, and I find his multitasking is so strong, and I think Heart of the Swarm is really going to actually help him out with that. Um, Stefano... He might not even... Yeah, given the bracket, he's just going to be like a top... 16. I think he'll beat last. Well, he'll probably beat Thor's in QXC, but then go down to Pulp. Pulp. So top eight for him. MC Hero. That, that lower right up at the end. That lower bracket is so stacked. I'm just gonna pull up the bracket. I know we're getting deferred here during the lightning round, but this bracket's ridiculous. Yeah, I, put it, I put it in the uh, yeah, I put it in the chat there. So MC Hero, impossible to tell. Feast MVP, sadly MVP. And I think MVP will beat Hero or MC. I mean, we saw how well he did at IEM. So MVP, a top a top three there. Teja Sase, I don't think are really going to be contenders. And neither will uh, Ghost User or Bomber. On the other side, to go with the lightning round theme and try to speed it up. I haven't seen Parting play Hots. I actually missed his IEM games. So let's go with Seed or Rain. Whoever wins that first match is going to make it to the finals, I think. Wow. Seed is, like, super good. Um, I he don't is. know if you guys know much about it, but that kid is crazy. He's like the young law that Artosis doesn't talk about all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Got his favorite. Um, that took forever. No points. Question number 10. <laughs> uh, I believe you're at four now. Uh, this is one I had to make up on the fly. Okay. Got to think about this here. All right, is so, it going to be better than my end scene? Uh, I don't know. Your end scene was pretty good. Although it wasn't what pretty I was good. looking for. Question number 10. I'm going to give you a hypothetical situation inside of a StarCraft game. So let's say an opponent's being six pooled, Okay. Uh, that's not the situation, but that's an example. And I want you <clears throat> and uh, Nick or Frank, who wants to participate in this? Nick. All right. Uh, so you're going to be right. casting with Nick in this hypothetical situation. So I need you to play off each other. Um, so basically, you're going to get all your information about what's going on from the other person and what they say. All so right. I'm, I'm going to give you a situation, and you have to cast it um, for a good 30 seconds Ooh. to a minute. Or if you can end the game through your casting, that's also good. Let's do this, Katu. Can I just say Idra's one of the players and he left the yep. game? <laughs> 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 All right, you get a bonus point for that because it was funny. <laughs> but this is serious. The, the, players, uh, the players, let's say uh, the players are... Do, 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 do. 
Uh, let's take two Canadians. Uh, we'll take Hendrilisk is one of them, so it's going to be mm-hmm. Zerg. Okay. Uh, Yo, he's so good. He is. Too good. Yeah. Versus um, Saravati, because I, I love Saravati, and he's a clarity guy. Um, and don't feel tempted to make him win, just because he's part of your team. So the game is Hendrilisk versus Saravati on Ohana. Okay. okay. And it is an Immortal Century all-in. From Saravati, but Saravati has forgotten to put a pylon or bring a warp prism, so he's he's free floating out there. Um, but Hendrilisk only has drones. <laughs> what? Well, Nick, I've got to say, you know, Hendrilisk versus Saravati, fantastic matchup here. But I can't believe we've gotten to this position where. Saravati moving out. He's always a tricky player going for the all-in. Not surprised at all. Mm-hmm. But he forgets a pylon, and his opponent only has drones. How is he going to get out of this one? I have no idea. Why did Hensus not make any units? He definitely scouted the immortal push. He looked at the plus timing. He sees the weapon timing. And here comes Saravati. He's going on. But, oh, my goodness, a destructible rock. <laughs> destructible rock saving the day once again. Saravati going to have to go all the way around. But that does give him enough time to send a probe out from his base and lay down a pylon. Conversely, Hendrilus now has the time to build the roaches, the zerglings that he needs to hold. But he needs to set up a flank. Will the force field be where they need to be? Oh my goodness, here it comes. Here comes the third base right now. Hendrilus is trying to get a surround, but oh my gosh, beautiful for the Guardian Shield going down as well. But these roaches, <laughs> they don't have burrow. No burrow, but there's <laughs> but there's too many <laughs> force fields. So Ten good. centuries, that's 40 force fields. The roaches just can't get in to do any damage. The Sentry Immortal strikes again, Nick Saravati. He's looking in pretty oh good position. Goodness. But the rallies from Hendrilus, they just keep coming. Oh my goodness, crushing in, but the nice force field on the ramp blocking all of Hendrilus' reinforcements, and now Saravati is pushing up into the natural. So many things going down. There goes the hatchery. The hatchery is down, but so is the Night Swarm in the main base. Hendrilus making the Hail Mary play. He's got an Overlord going across the map. He's going to try to Nidus into his own opponent's main base. Ah, oh, it gets scouted by. Oh, man. Probes pulled. Night Swarm gets stopped. And Hendrilus. GG. GG. I have yeah. this. Wasn't enough. That was epic. But it was so strong. That was really <laughs> exciting. That was fantastic. I felt like I was <laughs> watching that. Game. Like the Guardian Shield on the drone song. That was a clever, <clears throat> clever move. Yeah. Um, you let Nick talk for way too long. Um, <laughs> yeah, minus three points. Damn it. I'm sorry. And you also had Saravati win, which shows bias. And that was Nick's. <laughs> That was my fault. I was, I was, well, that's uh, your fault for letting Nick make up. that call. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, you, you got a strong C on that. Uh, let me tally all that right. up. You had the bonus question. Carry this. So you yeah, turned 26 the other day? Was that... Is that what you said? Yeah, that's what he said. 26. Uh, two and six is eight. You had eight points. <clears throat> Congratulations, sir. Uh, you just made the cutoff line to qualify for the Tournament of Champions for the Lightning Round, which will be happening live in Las Vegas in November. Um, all your airfare <laughs> is paid. The tickets are in the mail, so I do encourage you to show up for that and participate. Uh, it's going to be a 64-man bracket. <laughs> At the Bellagio. <laughs> Champagne and man, got it. Katu, thank awesome. you so much Boy. for joining us this evening. Uh, you were a ton of fun. And as someone in the mm-hmm. chat said, you were very well spoken. And mm-hmm. we hope that you um, continue. A commentator. <laughs> we hope that you um, keep casting as well as playing. Yeah, um, I guess on that note, I could say that I am going to start doing a bit more casting with uh, Clarity. But uh, look for me in those brackets. That's, that's really what I'm going to be uh, working hard to do. We will be looking for you. We're always supporting sure. Canadian players, and we'd love to have you back too. If you're ever going to announce anything, or uh, if, when you win, uh, when you win a huge tournament, we'll have you back 100%, and even before that, I'm sure. Sounds awesome. We'll do. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Thank you guys, that pretty much does wrap it up for us. I know we went over 10 o'clock my time, 9 o'clock your time, but uh, that was our own fault. Screwing up. So we will be back next week for episode 27. Who are our guests, Frank? 
Oh, uh, the guys from Cooper. So uh, James Choi and uh, Adrian Faxdorf, uh, guys who run lands and barcrafts in Vancouver. Fantastic. And as well, I'm sure they have some sort of connection to UBC, and they can tell us all about the barcraft that happened there on the weekend, and as well as the land they have coming up as a qualifier for the Esports Canada Alliance. Uh, as well, the Fiber Up Gaming League has announced their return for spring. Uh, qualifiers will be held starting April 1st through uh, 4th, and that's all online. League of Legends and StarCraft open to anyone in Canada, so Katu, I encourage you to sign up for that right now on uh, bellalliant.net slash F-O-G-L, Fiber Up Gaming League. Um, sign up, ton of prizes, there's a couple pro invites, I can't tell you who they were, um, but they're all Canadian top pros, and there's going to be eight of them. Maybe I'll reveal it's one Alexei of those Mon, G, or, Sorry, Alexei Mon, great, and they're both in your, your group. Like. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to our well, guests okay, this I'll evening. I'll this time, I'll be ready. Thank oh, you to our guests right. this evening, Katsu, and of course William of Francois from Land ETS for joining us. Tune in next week. We'll be covering the West Coast Vancouver scene. I have been your host at Quinn of the Net, joined by my two lovelies, Barker's Beauties, Frank Ricci, and Nick Saunders. Last words, gentlemen. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, guys, head to our website, esportscanada.ca, and join the forums. With Hots coming out, we want to explode onto the scene and have a ton of discussions going on there. As well, check out the Clarity Gaming site, launching on March 22nd. Uh, follow us on Twitter at esports underscore Canada and on Facebook.com slash esports Canada. Thank you. <laughs>